वेलकम बैक टू स्टैटिस्टिक्स मेड सिंपल एंड आई एम सविता बल्सम इन दिस वीडियो आई विल एक्सप्लेन एक्सेप्टेंस सैम्पलिंग एंड द टू टाइप्स ऑफ सैम्पलिंग प्लान दैट इज अ सिंगल सैम्पलिंग प्लान एंड डबल सैम्पलिंग प्लान All of you are aware of process control, where we control the quality of the product during its manufacturing process, and for it we make use of Schwartz control charts. Here uh, we will talk about product control or acceptance sampling. Now, whatever products are manufactured, they will be accepted after inspection, and only if they conform to the quality standards. So there are two important inspection methods. one is through 100% inspection that is by inspecting each and every item which is manufactured in the lot the second is through sampling inspection plans 100% inspection is impractical and expensive so in most of the cases we make use of the statistical techniques that is the sampling inspection plans so there are two sampling plans a single sampling plan and a double sampling plan which are also abbreviated as ssp and dsp so what are the advantages of acceptance sampling firstly acceptance sampling helps us to decide whether the desirable quality has been achieved for a batch of products it is used when the items are destructive in nature and it's less expensive as compared to 100% inspection What are some of the disadvantages of acceptance sampling? There is a risk of accepting a bad lot and rejecting a good lot since verification is done only on the basis of samples. Then timely identification of the production of defectives cannot be achieved. Let's begin with a single sampling plan. So in a single sampling plan a random sample is drawn from a lot then each item in the sample is examined depending on the number of defectives the conclusion will be drawn so to make it simple in a single sampling plan the decision about accepting or rejecting a lot is based on one sample this is important to remember so there are various steps or procedure for a single sampling plan let me first explain the various terminologies capital n denotes the lot size small n denotes the sample size and small d denotes the number of defectives in a sample and c is called as the acceptance number and it is the maximum number of defectives which you can have in a sample Before I explain the steps involved in a single sampling plan I would like to give a small explanation about a flow chart a flow chart it consists of boxes called the symbols and arrows called the flow lines the box depicts the process and the flow line indicates the next step which has to be performed this symbol is used to indicate the beginning or the end of a flow chart when this symbol is used for start no flow lines can enter it so what are the steps involved in a single sampling plan so first consider a random sample of size n from a lot of size capital n next inspect all the items in the sample and let d be the number of defectives so if d is less than or equal to c then you accept the lot and replace all the defectives by good ones and if d is greater than c you reject the lot and resort to 100% inspection replacing the defectives by good ones now these steps can also be drawn as a flow chart so first in a rectangle you can write inspect n that means you have to inspect the units which are there in the sample now next is you can see on the screen that you have a rhombus shape or a diamond shaped figure so in that you can write compare d with c 
and on the right hand side you see that I have written D is greater than C and on the left hand side of the rhombus or the diamond shape you have D is less than or equal to C. So first you are taking a sample of size N and then you are finding the number of defectives in the sample then you are comparing the number of defectives in the sample with the acceptance number which is C. And if D is greater than C, what should you do? You have to reject the lot and carry out 100% inspection, replacing the defectives by good ones. And if D is less than or equal to C, you have to accept the lot, replacing the defectives by good ones. So if they ask you to describe a single sampling plan, you can draw the flowchart or you can also explain it in the form of steps. Next we have the double sampling plan or DSP. So in a double sampling plan the decision about accepting or rejecting a lot is based on two samples. Now let me explain to you the various steps involved. The various notations used in the procedure are let capital N denote the lot size, let small n1 and n2 be the sizes of the first and second samples respectively let D1 and D2 be the number of defectives in the first and second samples respectively and let C1 and C2 be the acceptance numbers that means the maximum number of defectives which are allowed in the samples of both the samples respectively such that C1 is less than C2. are the various steps for a double sampling plan. First consider a random sample of size n1 from a lot of size capital N. Next let d1 be the number of defectives in this sample. So now check if d1 is less than or equal to c1. If the condition is satisfied you accept the lot and replace all the defectives by good ones. Suppose D1 is greater than C2, then reject the lot and carry out 100% inspection replacing the defectives by good ones. Now there is another condition to check. Suppose D1 lies between C1 and C2 and it can also be equal to C2. That means C1 is less than D1 is less than or equal to C2 then what you have to do is you have to select a sample of size n2 from the remaining lot and then in this sample of size n2 you find out the number of defectives which is denoted by d2 then you have to check if d1 plus d2 is less than or equal to c2 if this condition is satisfied you accept the lot and replace the defectives by good ones and if D1 plus D2 is greater than C2, then you reject the lot and carry out 100% inspection, replacing the defectives by good ones. The DSP also I have depicted using a flowchart. Firstly, I am inspecting the units in the sample of size N1 and then I will find the defectives D1 in the first sample of size n1 and I'll compare this d1 with c1 and c2. So you see that in the rhombus shaped figure there are three flow lines one towards the right one towards the left and one vertically down. So on the right hand side first you have to compare d1 with c2. So if D1 is greater than C2, you reject the lot and carry out 100% inspection, replacing the defectives by good ones. On the left hand side, you are comparing D1 with C1. Suppose D1 is less than or equal to C1, the decision that you have to take is you have to accept the lot, replacing the defectives by good ones. If both these conditions are not satisfied, then you check C1 less than D1 is less than or equal to C2. Suppose this is the condition being satisfied then what you have to do is you have to select another sample of size N2 from the remaining lot that is you have to inspect N2 now. Now in N2 you have to 
find the number of defectives that is D2. Then you compare D1 plus D2 with C2. Now here also you see that there are two flow lines, one towards the right and one towards the left. On the left hand side you are checking if D1 plus D2 is less than or equal to C2. If this condition is satisfied you accept the lot replacing the defectives by good ones. And suppose D1 plus D2 is greater than C2 then you have to reject the lot and carry out 100% inspection replacing the defectives by good ones. Now the diagram needs a lot of practice even the procedure which is written in the form of sentences also requires lot of practice. So do practice to remember the various steps both for the single sampling plan and the double sampling plan. I will now explain the differences between a single sampling plan and a double sampling plan. The designing and the test procedure in a single sampling plan is much more simpler than in a double sampling plan. The decision based on two samples is more reliable as compared to the decision based on a single sample in a single sampling plan. And in a double sampling plan, if the lot is accepted at the first stage, then there will be reduction in the number of items inspected which makes the cost of inspection lesser. With this video, I come to the close of the chapter Statistical Quality Control. I hope all the videos on the control charts as well as acceptance sampling were useful to you and I hope you really benefit from these videos. Do practice, that's really very important. Thank you all for watching and look out for my next video where I will start the topic Inventory Theory.